guys, thanks for your patience. I'm going to do my starter now. So could you please um, have your dry wipes open, please? Your dry wipes with your diary open. Okay. Me to knee to Capilla. She is a biology teacher at Burnham Upper School in Slough. Yeah. And your objective today is that you're going to assess the assessment level of others and you're going to look at your own work later on to see what level you've got for your assessment. OK, so what I want to do... AFL helps me to find out where the pupils are at and also it tells me what their weak areas are. So it could be that their weak area is biology or chemistry or physics. So usually there's, there's a kind of a weakness with someone. So we have subject specific assessments where we can actually assess how they're doing. And hopefully before we get to the SATS exam, we can then work on certain areas, um, say scientific inquiry, before they actually sit their SATS exams. I've got some, I'm gonna put some diagrams on the board. I'm gonna uh, put a, a label, one, two, three, four, five, six, and what you're going to do is you're going to put in big letters on your dry wipes what part of the cell it is. OK, so that one. Write it down, please. Nice and big so I can see it. Three, two, one. Show me. Cell wall, OK? Cell wall. Now watch where the lines are, OK? I would use um, assessment for learning in the starters, for example, by having diagrams on the board. They'd write with a dry board marker pen what the answer is to, say, number one. And then when I say, show me, I get like a sea of answers. And I, I look around and it helps me to see who's understanding the work and who isn't. I can target my teaching and revision protocol accordingly. Three, two, one, show me. It's actually the cell membrane. Well done. Anita uses a strategy called the level ladder with her students to aid them with understanding their own learning. The level ladder awards a grade to the pupils on their formative assessments for meeting specific criteria. When a pupil does an assessment, okay, they have the level ladder okay, under the task and depending on how many criteria that they filled in for that level, then we grade them on a, we subdivide their level into a 3A, B or C. So 3A being like um, the lowest and 3C being the highest. So if they fulfilled like one of the criteria, I'd give them a 3A. If they've um, fulfilled two of the criteria, it'll be a 3B. And if they've done uh, more than that, it'll be a 3C. If they've done all of it, then I can go on to the next level, which is the four, and see how many parts of the criteria they fulfilled there. So, for example, if you're working at a level five level, you should be able to tell things apart, distinguish different things. Um, also, apply information from secondary sources to actually explain something. In order to get to a level seven, they need to be able to link ideas. So, for example, if we're doing reproduction, where you learn about eggs and sperms coming together, and if you're then able to link back to the cells topping and say, actually, they're specialised cells, that's a level seven ability. Today, the students are looking at papers from previous students and marking them using the level ladder. I'm going to give you that ladder, you know, that ladder that you work from to do your assessment. I'm going to give you other pupils' assessments. You're going to be working in groups of about five or six. And what you're going to do, you're going to read the same assessment, all of you, in the group, the group of five. Each group is going to have a different one, OK? The first thing you have to do is underline three things that they've done correctly. It's always good to um, motivate the pupil by finding three good things that they've done. Even though the overall assessment might not be so high a mark, they've been commended for the things that they've done correctly. And then what I want you to do is, using the level ladder, I want you to give them a mark. Now, 5A, 5B, 5C, for example, which one's the highest, do I normally say? Yes. 5C. And which one's the lowest? 5A. So what I want you to do is grade it with the letter. So they might be a level sixer, but you have to decide like, how many things they've got correctly, OK? And so, for example, if they've got like one thing correct in the six box, they'll get a 6A. Getting them to grade past assessments is good because it enables them to see what we see as members of staff and it helps them to see what they need to do to move forward. And it also helps them to be neutral about it, because it's not their own work. They're not going to be over-generous. 
with the marking. They can actually mark comfortably. Right, everyone read it, yeah? yeah. Right, so the cell wall, a hard and unflexible border that's that makes the system extend no. off. Yeah, that's right. A cell membrane, a flexible border that lets food and nutrients in and out, that's in and waste that's out. That's true, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Yeah. Yeah. Right, stay tuned. Like some simple facts about cells, if you how you see them, what they do, what they are like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that. So, they so they're in level four at the moment. Right, made the model of a, or a plant that has met, labelled most parts. Yes, that's yes. Yeah, they've done that. Made an accurate model, plant or animal cell, and have labelled parts. Have labelled all parts no. correctly. No, no, they haven't done that. Why do you think you've been given that to do? So we know how to like assess our own work and stuff. Right, and is it helpful for you? Yeah, yeah. Right, so I think they're in level 6B. It doesn't say that. I say in level 6B. What do you reckon? 6B. 6B? Yeah, we're deciding on 6B. <laughs> At the moment, Anita's Year 7 class is studying cells. After this lesson, they'll have an end of topic assessment, which will be graded and handed out to them with feedback. When I finished my A-levels, I didn't go straight to university. I worked in a lab um, in Norfolk Park and I, I worked on umbilical cords for three years. And then I worked with a group of pharmacologists at the time and that's when I started my career in um, the pharmaceutical industry. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to prepare your slides. Now, you're all professional at preparing slides now, aren't you? OK, this is the sort of thing that I used to do for a job. I was a cell scientist, OK? I actually feel quite upset when I can't actually focus the microscope because I think I used to do this for four years. Why is it I can't actually get it to focus? And usually, invariably, it's something wrong with the equipment that I'm using. But I used to get paid for um, looking at um, something called NS0 cells. And we had to count all the white ones and count all the blue ones. And I used to have a little counter and I used to click, OK? Count all the white ones, count all the blue ones, count all the white ones, count all the blue ones. That's all I used to do all day long, OK? And I used to get loads of money for it as well, OK? I use my experience in industry to um, enthuse them into the subject. This is an amazing activity. Can you actually get paid for this? Says, yes, you can get paid for this. You can do forensics. You can work as a cell biologist. And uh, they're kind of enthused by that. I use stories to, to bring science alive. Um, we're looking at cheek cells. We got a cotton bud and we put it on our cheek and we put it on the slide and we add method in blue and you can see like the dead cells in the alive cells. No, 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 no we need method in blue, it's over there. Basically medium medium power is better, okay? <laughs> Where about did you do the smear in the centre? Yeah. You sh what do you mean you think so? I need to know. Yeah, I think it works. Because I'm not going to find any unless uh, you tell me which area it was in that yeah, slide. It's in the okay, there's fantastic numbers of cheek cells here. <laughs> Let me just see if I can see the cheek cells. Yeah, I've had real problems getting cheek cells. It's been a nightmare, but I'll try my best. Okay, I can see one there. Oops. There's just one there. Can you see? People think that that's a cell. That's not. That's the bubble edge. Okay. You will go. Oh, look! I've got, I've got a cell. No, you haven't got a bubble. It's time for Year Seven's formative assessment about cells. Now they've marked a previous paper using the level ladder. They know the criteria they need to meet to progress. So they've been asked to make a model cell for the science museum, and an information card to go with that. I'd probably give myself about a six. Because I know most of the main parts of the plant cell and I can draw one, or I can draw either one of the cells. I think I would give myself like in a 5B because um, I know like lots about cells, but I think I, think, I, think I need to learn a bit, bit more about it. The lower ability pupils be working to a 3 to 5 and the higher ability will be working from a 5 to 7. And what they need to do is make sure that they're always pushing themselves one level beyond their own capability. So if they're a level 5, they need to do what's in the 6 box, so that they're always pushing themselves forward. They're not just staying comfortably at 5. When they've done that, I then take that in and I mark that. And I always like highlight three things that they've done correctly to motivate them. And we call that quality mark. That's the policy that's been brought into our school through one of our inset programmes. 
Some pupils with this assessment have actually done a lot better than I thought they would. They've actually, instead of just drawing an ordinary animal cell, they've actually drawn a specialised cell. So they've kind of pushed themselves to a six, like, automatically, and quite a few have done that. And that was quite interesting, because I'd expected them just to draw the normal sort of round circle for the animal cell and the nucleus and just label the parts and the functions there. But actually they've drawn sperm cells or red blood cells or ciliated epithelial cells, which is quite good. So they've tried to push themselves forward. So quite a few sixes um, I've got in this class now, so it's quite good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you back your assessments. I've marked them already. And I've put one, two and three. What I've done is I've highlighted three things that you've actually done correctly. OK? And then I've also put your grade, what you've got, and what you need to do to move on to the next level. OK? Kaylee. They read the comments and, you know, take it in, and hopefully they know what to do next time they're challenged with a similar task. And then we then staple their assessment into their books. So they've always got a record of, of their uh, assessment levels. We also get them to report their grading onto a card, which we then keep so that we monitor how they're doing. I got a 6A. Um, I think I need to mem memorise the parts of the cells a bit more so I know exactly where they are <gasps> and what they look like and, what, and how they're good at doing their job. I got 5B. I think I did quite well on it and I'm quite happy with my mark. Every three weeks or every six lessons I'm required to put a green verbal stamp in their book and what I do is I go round and discuss with the pupil what do you think you need to do to move forward? And then they say, OK, I think I need to write in full sentences. I say to them, yeah, I agree with that, yeah. write that down. Yeah. And so they write that down. So in their books, not only do they have a comment from me, they have a comment that I've actually discussed with them in their books as well. So it helps us to work smarter and not harder. <laughs> OK, Kaylee, let's have a look. OK, so you can see the three things you've done correctly. Which three things have I highlighted that you've done correctly? Um, I labelled the nucleus and the vacuole correctly. And then what have I done here? Um, you've told me where I've gone wrong mm -hmm. and the proper answer. OK, so what should go in between organ and organism? The organ system. That's right, OK. And then I've given you the grade over here and what you need to do to move forward. So what do you have to do? Um, why is sperm cell good at its job? Mm -hmm. Label all parts and describe function of each part. No chloroplast in root hair cell. Yeah, and why do you think there's no chloroplast in root, root hair cells? Because there's no what underground? Just imagine what it's like being... Light. There you go. OK, so you only find chloroplast where it's light. OK, is that helpful? Yeah. Good. And then, as you can see, you've got a, a grade 5B, and that's what you need to do to move on. Yeah. So what's the function of the nucleus, then? The nucleus controls the cell. Mm -hmm. And what about the um, cytoplasm? What does that do? I think that since we've been doing this kind of assessment, it's helping them to aspire to something more, to push themselves. And I've heard kids say, I don't want to be a level 5 anymore, I want to be a level 6. So that's quite nice to hear, actually, them being enthusiastic about moving forward. And uh, that's the whole point of, of these type of exercises, that actually it's giving them motivation to move forward. Whereas if I'm not giving them any guidelines to move forward, they're just going to stay where they are, they're going to stay static. I actually think, although it's a lot of work, it's actually beneficial to them. <laughs>